this is so cute. I got myself a red book cart and it is just the most adorable thing. I, it's so handy. Helps me keep all of my books and writing materials nearby. And I don't have to shake the table anymore when I'm filming to show you anything. I just love it. I know it was all the rage on Instagram and on YouTube for a couple of years, but I'm always late to trends and things. So there we are. <laughs> Um, I've set myself a little miniature challenge for this month. In addition to my writing plans, I'm going to be reading some Palestinian speculative fiction in um, June. Now, I last year started a challenge which was to read Palestinian speculative fiction, and I created an entire reading list. It's quite popular, but the challenge didn't take off. I tried it on Twitter and I just didn't have the mileage, I think, or the reach to make it um, take off. But I'm not daunted. And I think maybe with a little bit more structure, it might be a little bit um, more manageable for people to dive in if they have never tried any before. So what I did is I chose a novel from every novelist that was on the list because the, the list itself, which I'll leave a link in the description to, covers poetry, short fiction, and long fiction, nonfiction, so there's essays, interviews, picture books, comics, graphic, um, graphic novels. There's just, there's everything that I could find. And I have read many of this, the short fiction because that's sort of my, my uh, wheelhouse. And I don't read a lot of novels, so I decided to choose a novelist or one novel from every novelist that was on the list. And I, as a treat, <laughs> I allowed myself a book of short stories as well. So there's more books that are in the mail right now, but Right now I have this one, which is The Book of Disappearance by Ibtisam Azim, translated from the Arabic by Sinan Antun. And this is apparently a, a novel about, it speculates like what would happen, speculative fiction always has a often has like a question that's at the heart of the story. Um, and the question of this is what would happen in Israel if every Palestinian just disappeared one day, completely disappeared without a trace. And so it's part mystery and delving into the complicated realities of people that are left behind. So there's, um, Part of it is told through the entries in a journal by one of the Palestinians that disappeared and his neighbor, his Israeli Jewish neighbor, is trying to find out what happened to the Palestinians. And there's a mixture of reactions to this. So I'm really interested in taking a look at what, what, um, what this one has to show for me, but it's I'm not in the mood for something really heavy right now, so I'm not sure I'm going to pick that one up right away. I had a trigger yesterday, and unfortunately I have to um, take into account my ability to uh, handle anything that's really heavy right now. Uh, I don't want to just burn myself out, and I don't really engage with the book as well as I could otherwise. So. I don't know if there's any trigger warnings for this book. I haven't looked them up, but I might have to do that just in case. As frankly, a lot of Palestinian fiction is very heavy because our reality is dealing with colonialism and uh, racism and apartheid and stuff like that. So 
um, it's to be expected when I when I'm reading these this material. Um, then the other book I have is Elise Stevens' Forecast, and this is a YA novel. Um, the psychic gift of prophecy has torn apart Calvin Forsythe's family before. For many generations, the ability to see the future has come tied to a life-altering curse and the chilling attention of a secret society intent on drawing the Forsythe bloodline under its power. So this is a nice, chunky fantasy book. <laughs> and I've never... I haven't read a lot of YA, so this is going to be something very interesting for me um, in terms of like the category. I read a lot of fantasy, but usually short fiction. So I'm looking forward to this one. And I don't have any of the other novels that I want to read this month here, but I have the short story collection. And this is by Jamil Nasser. It's called Short Trips. And Jamil Nasser is, as far as I know, he's he is one of the, if not the uh, earliest Palestinian speculative fiction writers in English. He is um, on the on the reading list. So his novels go back quite a ways, quite a few decades, and this is the only collection of Palestinian speculative fiction that's been written in English by a single author that I could find. So I'm really looking forward to trying this out as a, as a treat. <laughs> I may dip in and out because the stories are so short. Um, to maybe give me a break from the heavier material. Um, but I find it's easier to manage triggers when it's short fiction. Because you're, you can kind of step back a little bit and then re-engage when you're, when you're ready. Um, but speaking of, I have to mention that I definitely am not going to ignore that there's other collections that are available in English that they're translated from Arabic. So Palestine Plus 100 is an excellent collection of stories. You can see here it's stories from a century after the Nakba. And these are all speculative fiction, a lot of science fiction. Um, that deals with what Palestine would be like a hundred years after the expulsion of the Palestinians in 1948, which is called the Nakba. And that milestone will be upon us before long. It's going to be a couple of decades from now. So these are sort of near future um, settings. And you can see I haven't actually finished this book because it was so heavy. Uh, it's very dense material, very heavy material. And uh, being Palestinian, it also is a little bit, it, it, it touches, uh, it resonates a little bit too much sometimes. So it's always good to just back off when you have that kind of reaction. Um, there's also, I mean, I'm going to get into this more in depth. One of the things that I want to try is a video that's about the Palest the Read Palestinian Spec, spec Fic Challenge <laughs> um, for reading Palestinian speculative fiction. Um, and so I'll be able to go through and sort of do a little primer on where you can find these books and, and short stories. Some of them are available online, things like that. So I won't go into depth on all of like my whole collection here, but uh, they are here. So um, the other collection that I'm looking forward to reading eventually is uh, Reworlding Ramallah. 
short science fiction stories from Palestine. And these also were, they actually include the English translations, but also the Arabic originals uh, as well. There's even some diagrams. So, oh, so interesting. I have this whole section here of contemporary Palestinian literature. Um, a lot of things that I want to get to eventually, but knowing that my stamina is what it is, what it is I'm trying to keep things restricted to just these two novels, Forecast and The Book of Disappearance, and um, another one that's called um, The Secret Life of Saeed the Pesopotamus. Pess optimist <laughs> and it's somewhat comical but it deals with the a, a main character who is an informant so there's there is some heavy material there but it's dealt with in a kind of satirical way that's my impression of it anyway by um Hemi Emil Habibi so those three novels are my goal in terms of reading this month. I know that was really rambly, so I might cut a little bit of that, we'll see. Um, quickly, uh, the, read the progress on revising my novel. I still have a chunk in my clipboard here for about two or three chapters to revise over the course of this week. And this is actually the goal that I'm setting myself for the Clarion West Write-a-thon. I'll leave a link in the description to that. It's where you can sponsor me to complete this goal that I have of revision. Um, and the money will go towards scholarships for the Clarion West workshop, which is one of the premier science fiction, fantasy, speculative fiction writing workshops. And I applied to it this year. I didn't get in, unfortunately, but someone had paid forward, gave, gave me the money for the application fee. And so I'd like to, to pay that back in terms of um, helping out with the scholarship. So if you want to support me, the link will be in the description for that. Um, what else? Ah, yes. The, I have my list over here. Um, for the Paranormal Palestine series, uh, the next episode is going to be centered around the jinn, who are supernatural beings. Sometimes they're, um, well, they're, they're, a complicated race of people and in Palestinian folklore there's a little bit of a twist on on their origin in particular so I want to get into just setting the record straight in terms of how, how Palestinian folklore approaches the jinn because they are they appear in like Islamic general Islamic and Arabic folklores and also theology I, I believe so it's somewhat removed from that in, in the, the Palestinian vein of things. And I think, I th I think it's very interesting. <laughs> um, I like the, the twist that they put on it. Uh, I, I think that there's a whole lot of scope for people like me to come in and, and create modern takes on it. Um, Wow, I, I, I did actually cover everything. So we're under 15 minutes. That's incredible. I thought it was going to be much, much longer. Uh, so yeah, I have a wonderful book cart. I have a picture of it here. I'll post it in there in post-production. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>